Hello everyone, Simon3D here and today we're gonna make this procedural infrared camera effect in Blender and at the end of the tutorial you will have this neat group that you can then plug to basically any material on your model selectively so you can decide whether you want to have the original material visible or not or if you want to, in my case, drive it with a empty object that as you can see is just zooming through the scene on certain keyframes, making this look like we actually switched the infrared view on and off again. So without further ado, let's hop into new Blender scene. First of all, let's delete everything and we will need our model. You can use whatever you want, but I will go to Mixamo and get one of their high quality model and animations. So first, when you log into Mixamo, go to characters and then choose whichever character you prefer. I chose this guy, but feel free to pick up anything. It's going to work either way. And then you go to this animations tab and you search for an animation that you want to have for your scene, or you can just keep him in the T-pose, whatever you prefer. I will go for one of the idle animations. Maybe this happy idle. It looks a little bit funky, but I like it. So after you are all set up, you can change some settings here. So like increase the character arm space, then his hands are gonna be further apart. Overdrive is just the speed of the animation. So the right is faster, the left is slower. I will leave it as it is. And then when you're ready, just click download and again, download. Now choose a location, click save. And then after you will finish downloading it, go back to Blender. Then in Blender, go to file, import and choose the FBX. Then go to the location where you downloaded it and simply click import FBX. Then you should have something like this. The character in the middle, if you click play, you should have the animation working. No problem. And first of all, what we want to do is we want to customize the timeline because as you can see, the armature has only animation up to the 90th frame, but our animation has 250. So let's just loop it a little bit. So hit A to select all the keyframes, Control C to copy them. And right after the first one, Control V to paste all the keyframes so that we have a second loop of the animation and we can then stop the animation at 178th frame. And so we have a nice looping sequence. Now, second thing is a little bit of cleanup, because if you go here and open this armature, you can see that all the body parts of our model are separated and that's just not ideal. I mean, it may be for some purposes, but in our case, to keep it a little bit better organized, let's select the body and then shift select tops so that we have all the models selected and hit ctrl j to combine everything into one mesh as you can see the animation isn't really broken it still works fine so now let's go to the material preview and you may have this problem and that is because the material have the blend mode set to alpha blend but if you change it to opaque then it should fix it and because our model has more than one material for each part separate you have to go through all the materials and just make sure that the blend mode is set to opaque And now you may also have this problem. I mean, there's something wrong with the eye textures and that kind of creeps me out. So I'll fix that real quick, but feel free to just leave it as it is because for the infrared material, it doesn't really matter how the UVs are looking, but it should be a quick fix. So simply click tab to go into the edit mode, switch here to the UV editing tab. Now let's select the eyes by simply hovering over with your mouse and clicking L on your keyboard, second one as well, and then click U on your keyboard and choose project from view. This is a very quick and dirty way to do it but I just wanted it to look less creepy. So it's just a quick and dirty way, but it does the job. So then you just move it around and make sure that it looks like an eye. Okay, he has some problem here. Yeah, that's about right. I mean, I mean, they still look so less, but it's better than before. Right, so let's go back into the layout and let's now drag in a new viewport and change it into the shader editor. Now, as you can see, we have those default maps that the model comes with. And you may notice when I click play, then I have only around 23 FPS, even though my settings are set to 30, which means I have a little problem with the performance while recording the tutorial and everything. So I will just delete those two bottom maps the opacity and the normals as I don't care for them too much because this tutorial is focused around something else and it will just give me a little bit more performance but it's not mandatory if you have a strong enough computer then everything should be fine now it's back at 30 so let's move into creating the actual shader let's move this aside because that is gonna stay as the original material and now what we want to create is another material branch that we can switch into depending on our needs now one more very important thing actually before we start with the shader we have to first set up a dynamic paint canvas 
does. Let's pause him because he keeps me out a bit. So this whole effect is based on dynamic paint. So that is why we have to go into the body, then the physics tab and choose dynamic paint. For the whole body, let's leave it at canvas and just click add canvas. Now let's go into the output and you can see that the paint map layer is red, which means there is basically no paint map layer of this name. So let's go into the object data properties, open the vertex colors and click plus to add a vertex colors group. Now we can go back into our dynamic paint and the paint map layer, we can choose the group that we just created. Now everything here we can leave as it is and that is basically our canvas done. And now we need to create our brush that will paint on our canvas. And because this is a infrared camera, we want the body. So basically the hands, the face, the neck, everywhere where you can see the skin to be our brushes, to be the brightest spots. I hope that is not too confusing right now, but if it is, just bear with me for a moment and soon everything will make sense. So with the body selected, let's click tab to go into the edit mode. And now hovering over the parts that we want to be our brush, click L to select all the connected faces. So let's go over the hands, the face, the other hand, and the legs and let's also select the eyes because they are supposed to emit heat as well i guess and with all the parts selected simply click shift d and then with the model hovering click right mouse button to put it back in place and then click p to separate the selection now we can get out of the edit mode and as you click play you can see that both of the meshes are supposed to be connected to our armature so that it moves in the exact same way and this is very important because our brush is going to be based on proximity so it has to match the mesh the canvas as close as possible so with the newly created part of the body which is basically just the flesh let's also name it brush because that's what it's going to be let's change the type from canvas to brush and click add brush now here in the source we need to change the mesh volume to mesh volume plus proximity to have a little bit more control over what's going to be affected and now in order to visualize what we are actually doing we can go into the shader editor and add a vertex color node in this node let's look for the vertex group that we created and we can preview the node Control shift left mouse button on the node but also let's hide the brush in the viewport so that we don't see it and also in the render and you can see that our body turned blue which is the color that is being painted by our brush so everything works perfectly and if the preview doesn't work for you then make sure that in edit preferences add-ons you have a node wrangler enabled because that is the shortcut from this add-on so just make sure that it's on because we may use it in this tutorial quite extensively now with this done we can also test whether it works on other pieces of the material so here in this slot one we can change it to let's say top mat which is gonna be the shirt i believe and also add a vertex color choose the color and let's preview this node and you can see that it also is all blue which means that it is working but also not in the way that we want to because we want only the body parts to be the hottest areas and then where you wear shirt we just want a little bit of bleed but we don't want those values to be the same and because this is dynamic paint we have to actually play the animation to see the changes that we're about to make so let's go to the brush again and remember we have this mesh volume plus proximity in the source and then the distance basically tells how far from the body this paint is gonna be applied on our mesh so simply bring this down to something like 0.1 maybe and then as the animation starts from the first frame you can see that it's being adjusted by this value so now the shirt only gets a little bit of bleed of where it's the closest to the body now one more thing we can do to improve the dynamic paint is let's go to the original body and check this dissolve which is gonna make this paint dissolve over the amount of frames that we specify in here so let's type in something quite small like maybe 10 so that the heat doesn't hang out for longer than necessary and with this done we can go and create the actual material so let's pause the animation again and in the shader editor let's delete this vertex color in here because we are now in the top mat material let's switch back to the body mat which is the body and let's start here then we will create a group that we will later apply to the whole model to see the whole picture so now first thing that we want to do is let's change the preview from color to alpha because we want this to only be black and white values and now let's add a fernell node and then let's preview that fernell basically highlights the edges and so what we want to do is we want to subtract those edges those areas that are not really facing the camera because those spots will look a little bit colder 
in the infrared camera because they are not facing directly to the sensor. So for that we will need a math node and let's connect the vertex color alpha and the Fresnel node to the second input and change the math from add to subtract. Now if you preview that you can see that not much is happening and that is because we need to refine this Fresnel node a little bit. So let's add a color ramp and plug it in between the Fresnel and the math node. And now as you bring the white value in, you should see that the edge is more and more being cut out from the model. Just don't make it too extreme because the black value will basically mean that the area has like no heat at all. And that's also not what we want. So keep it something like this. And if you preview the color ramp, you can see how the Fresnel looks like. And what we can do to make it more interesting is to add a little bit of noise in the transition from the white to black. And for that, we will need a mix RGB node and also a noise texture node. Plug it like so and with the noise texture selected we can also click ctrl t to get a mapping and texture coordinates node that we can change from object so that we have a little bit better control over the noise overall now change the mix from mix to overlay and you can already see what i was talking about so now you can play with the noise texture scale to adjust it a little bit give it some roughness a little bit of distortion and some detail to make it more granular let's also bring down the scale quite a lot and that seems all right now we can go back and preview the subtract node and we should have result something like this so now with this base done we can start to lay in some colors so let's bring in a color ramp, plug it in here and start putting in some colors. So the darkest values are gonna be the coldest, so something like purple. Then we'll go through this pinkish. Then the next one is gonna be something orangey and much brighter already. And the last one is gonna be very shiny yellow, something like this. And as you can see now, the body parts are quite uniform in the way they are the brightest. And I just feel like the skin doesn't really work this way and a little bit of noise always makes it a little bit more interesting. So in order to do that, we need to add another mix RGB node and plug it right after the vertex color and then add another color ramp, put it right here as well. Let's move it to make some space and plug the noise texture into the color ramp. And then the result of the color ramp goes into the mix RGB and the mix RGB, let's change it from mix to subtract. Now let's bring it all the way up and you can see that we are now subtracting this noise from the pure white vertex color and in order to control how much we're subtracting let's preview the colors and play with this color ramp to adjust how much we want to subtract we don't want too much maybe something like this just a little bit of noise on the surface to make it a little bit more interesting now because those warm places are supposed to emitting heat we want to use an emission shader node and also because emission doesn't require you to have any lights on the scene so that you can have this effect visible in the same way no matter of the lighting condition that you currently have on the scene so let's plug this colorful color ramp into the emission and we will need also a mix shader node because this emission is gonna be our filter that we only want to be visible in certain occasions and when it's off then we want to see the original material that the model had which we saved down here so let's now plug this principled bsdf to the second input of the mix shader and now as we preview this we can switch between the normal version and the infrared camera version we will do that dynamically later with an empty object but for now let's just put this one down and the shader that we created it's not finished but it's a good enough base let's select all the nodes and click ctrl g in order to create a group out of it. That is just gonna make it easier for us to move it across all the multiple materials that this model has. And also any changes made in this group is gonna be applied in all the other materials as well because it's the same group. So now a few things we need to do in here is we need to expose some values. So let's bring in this group input a little bit closer so that we see what we're doing. And first of all, let's drag in this mix shader factor into this empty output of the group input and that is just gonna create an input for us to adjust later from outside of the group if we go out you can see that now we have exposed this factor value that if we change we can see that this is what it does let's go back into the group and also go into the group tab and you can see we have this fac which is the short for factor we can change it into the switch because that is basically gonna be the switch between the old and the new material now with this basic setup done we can go out of the group now we can drag it in here we can also change the name of the node group itself so if it's selected go to the node and change the label into infrared effect because that's what it is let's also change the name here infrared and now if you click shift a you have all these categories of nodes that you can add if you go to group you will see the group that you just created in here as well so that we can add it in all the other sub materials of our model so let's delete it in here go from slot one to top mat shift a add our group infrared let's connect the shader in here and then the output 
goes into the material output surface and you can immediately see boom the heat from the body is bleeding a little bit over the shirt and everything so let's quickly do that to all the other submaterials I will speed it up so that I don't bore you too much and now when you have all your materials set up we can go back to our first one, open the group, and now as we work inside this group, we will see the updates on the whole body. And there's just few things that I would like to adjust, because right now you can see that those cold areas are also quite boring, just very uniform, and we would like to add a little bit of noise to it as well. So let's click play and see how it looks like in the motion. Remember that you can always go into the brush and adjust this distance, which is gonna make the bleeding more or less affecting the rest of the body. And now if you have those very like sharp corners, sharp edges, you can help it a little bit if you go to the body, to your canvas and select anti-aliasing. Now as you click play you can you should see a little bit smoother transitions between those two. And now if that still bothers you then let's fix it up in the shader as well. So here right after the vertex color we will need to add another math node and change it from add to power. Now also keep in mind because we have this group in all the sub materials it may take a little bit longer to update all the shaders as you make the changes but it shouldn't be too bothersome so now in this power as you bring the exponent a little bit higher you can see that the mask is getting much much softer and much much smoother than before so just play with it until you feel satisfied maybe something like 1.5 1.4 that's good enough and also in order to break up this transition a little bit we can add another mix rgb node right after power so we can just copy this one if you don't know how to copy just select the node shift d just like in the viewport and then you can move it wherever you want in this case let's change it from subtract to overlay and we can use the exact same noise that we've been using before and just put it as the second input and you should see now that the transition between them is getting broken apart by this noise which actually makes it more consistent because this noise is being applied everywhere else so now in order to break up this uniformity of the cold areas we have to go back here right after this overlay with the vertex color branch we need another mix rgb node and plug it right after the overlay and behind subtract change the mix to lighten and the second input is gonna be again the same noise texture just to keep the uniformity of the noise applied to our whole material and then as you control the factor you can see how much of it is added to our material so just keep it quite low but make sure that there is a little bit of that noise so that when we click play then it looks much more interesting just like that now these bright values bother me a little bit i mean they are still a little bit too uniform for me and of course you could break them down with this color ramp as I showed you before but there is also one more way that we can do that with slightly different result so in this Fresnel node down here we can simply play with this IOR index of refraction value which is gonna change the result of our Fresnel and thus give us a little bit different gradient results so as you bring it up you can see that basically all the hot areas are being affected so I like to keep it something maybe 1.7 that gives a little bit better result here on the on the edges of the model I feel and now let's bring up those cold values a little bit and the last thing to do here is to make it actually glow because someone actually on reddit pointed out the fact that the infrared imagery is basically reading the heat that's being emitted from the body so it's supposed to glow where the area is hot and i just thought that yeah i mean it's a really great point and i should definitely include that and so we will take care of this right now so first of all let's go into the render settings and enable bloom so that we have a little bit of glow from our hot spots and then right before emission and after the colorful color ramp we will need a math node and then connect this color ramp and you may think that we will just set it to multiply plug it into emission strength and then call it a day because if we increase the multiply value then you can see that our mesh is glowing more and more but that's actually not the case because as you can see the dark values are being super almost black and the bright ones are getting way more exposure and it just breaks everything apart so we need to be a little bit more clever about it so first thing that we want to do actually is change this multiply to add and add one because the emission of one is basically what's gonna let us see the model regardless of the light setup on our scene and so the values going out of the color ramp are between 0 and 1 right now we can preview that by simply changing this add to multiply leave it at 1 and then preview this math node right now it works only on the body because we are previewing this node from 
the group and the rest of the group just stays as it is, never mind. Anyway, so we have those values that are being plugged into the emission strength. And so what we want is we want the base of the strength, so the black values here, to not be zero, but actually one in the lowest point. And so that is why we change this multiply into add, to add one to basically every value, so that now you can see that everything is at least one but also bigger and then the next thing we want to do is let's also get out of the group and preview the actual shader and not the temporary viewer and so the next thing that we want to do is we want to add another math node right after it and change it to power because what power is gonna do is gonna increase the brighter values as you can see but won't touch the dark values because basically the cold values are one and one to the power of even 14 is still one. I mean, right now we can see that the bloom is really like screwing up the visibility, but you see my point now. Only the values above the strength of one are getting lifted up and thus being emissive and having the bloom. And the ones that are cold are still staying uh, without any bloom, so they don't glow. And I feel like that just makes so much sense. So that is why this setup in here. But keep it quite low, don't go too crazy with it. Maybe something like, like a four should give you a pretty good result. And I know that it's not 100% physically accurate because I mean, if you will look from this angle, you can see that the cheek is a little bit cold, which in real life wouldn't be like that. But I feel like it's pretty close to what actually you would get from a infrared camera. And also again, don't forget the brush controls how much the body heat affects the clothes. And so additionally, I mean, right now the brush is the flesh, but nothing stops you from creating another object, let's say a UV sphere, and also make it a brush and mesh volume plus proximity. And you can see that any number of brushes, any mesh can basically be the brush that can add to the heat of your body. So you can have, I don't know, let's put a little bit of heart in our chest. So that's also something that you can play with and get really cool result. And as well as adding paint, it can also erase paint if you check this checkbox. And that will basically remove any heat. So that just gives you basically unlimited possibilities of what you can do with it. Like, you know, make really cool setup with it. But I will leave all that to your creative vision. And also the last thing that I will do in this tutorial is show you how you can switch between those two modes, basically between the infrared and the normal material. So let's select our body. And now, as I mentioned before, we're gonna use an empty object. So shift A, empty plane axis is fine. And now let's go back, select our body again. And in here we want a gradient texture node with it selected control T to get mapping and texture coordinates, change to object. And here in this object, we want to choose the empty that we just created. In order to preview how it looks like, we can preview the gradient texture. And you can see that it basically creates the gradient from from zero to one, which is amazing. So we can simply just plug the result of the gradient texture into the switch value. And now let's rotate it on the Z axis by 90 degree so that the gradient goes from back to front. And also we can preview the actual group. And now you can see as we move this empty across our scene, we have the switch from the infrared to the normal material. And because our model has few of the sub materials, we'll have to copy this setup into every submaterial as we did before with the group. But before we do that, one more thing that you can control is, you can see that the transition now is quite smooth, but if you want it to be zero and one, basically what you need to do is add a math node right after the gradient texture, change it to power, and then bring the exponent ridiculously high, something like this. And then you will see you'll have this really harsh zero one values that will switch between. So now let's copy this to the other ones. You can simply select all the nodes, click control C and then in the other sub material control V to paste it, position it and plug the output of the power into the switch. Now, when you finish all this, you should have this nice switch working perfectly. Then the rest is just go to the keyframe, let's say 60, click I to get a location. And then let's say 64, move it back. I location so that it's gonna switch between them within four frames which I think is good enough and as you click your animation you should have this happy idle guy switching between normal view and the infrared view and now we can also go to the render preview and you can see that we don't have any lights now so the model looks quite weird so let's add a quickly an area light make it much stronger and even though the light and even though the look of the model depends greatly on the light setup, as soon as we switch to the infrared view, it doesn't really matter because we are using the emission material. So yeah, that would be it for this tutorial. 
I hope that it wasn't too confusing. I know that it was quite complicated, but hope that you got something out of it. You learned something, etc. And as always, I would really love to see what you come up with. So make sure to tag me on Twitter when you do something with it. And also for all the people that are watching until this moment, I want to start something. You know, as a sort of thank you for making it this far. And at the same time, make the people who are turning it off, like in the middle, to wonder like, hmm, what's that about? So in this video, I would like you to write a single sentence. It can be about literally anything, but it has to involve a word infra, just so we stay in tune with the tutorial. And so whenever someone comes into this video, they will be like, wow, why there is so many weird comments with this word? I don't know. I just thought it could be cool. But let me know if you feel like it's just cringy and forced. I mean, I totally get that. So that is all that I wanted to say. And I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.